If you have your Bible, today we're going to go into the scripture. Um, I would like you to follow with me. If you don't have a physical Bible, you can open the YouVersion Bible app and receive notes there as well. In John chapter 3 verse 14, it's a very famous verse, verse 16 that we all know, but I'm going to read two verses before verse 16. It says the following, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of God be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life or eternal life and in verse 16 you know for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life if we go to numbers 21 where the story originated I'm just going to read two verses numbers 21 and verse 8 and verse 9 then the Lord said to Moses make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole and it shall be that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent, put it on the pole, and so it was. If a serpent had bitten anyone, when he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. Now, we know from the Bible, you don't have to be a theologian. But if you read anything or heard anything about the Bible, you know that there are different typologies or similarities or shadows of who Jesus is. A lamb, a lion, the Holy Spirit sometimes is viewed as a dove, fire, wind, oil. But in here, Jesus himself speaks to a religious man and he compares himself to a serpent. A snake from the beginning in the Bible in the first few pages of the Bible you meet a serpent and he is not symbol of Jesus he is symbol of the devil snakes are devils and those of you who keep snakes as pets I don't know about you <laughs> I just think or pigs as pets I, I, or cats as pets okay I think I'm crossing the boundary now but but all right keep the cats 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 are okay but but pigs that's crossing it okay you can keep them if you really really like the the piglet keep the piglet but a snake snake everything about a snake is evil the way they are the way everything about them and in the bible they were presented serpents snakes jesus told us gave us authority over snakes and serpents satan is presented as a serpent and this is the time where jesus himself he doesn't compare himself to a lamb in this instance he doesn't compare himself to a lion in this particular story he says as moses lifted a serpent and he begins to make a comparison to himself as a serpent I believe every person needs to encounter Jesus as a snake, as a Christian. As an unbeliever, we meet Jesus as a lamb who takes away our sin. In Egypt, Israel met this lamb that was innocent. This lamb died. And because the lamb died, Israel was protected from the death that was killing the firstborn. But when they go on into Numbers 21, they are out of Egypt. They are out of slavery. They are out of the grip of their enemy. They're out of their past. They begin to complain. They are saved already. But they're complaining. They have flesh issues. They have other problems. And the Bible says the serpents begin to bite them and God doesn't bring the lamb again. He brings a snake. Makes a bronze like a red copper collar. Makes a snake through Moses and lifts it up and says if you look at the snake you will live. In Egypt if you have the blood of the lamb you will live but the moment you get saved God gives another revelation about his son Jesus Christ where he is revealed as a bronze serpent why is that Jesus as a lamb died for my sin as a serpent he became my sin as a lamb, I received redemption. 
as a serpent I was given righteousness as a lamb the sin was placed on him and therefore the penalty of my sin was removed and I am forgiven but still struggle with guilt I am forgiven but I still have the memories and I still have the residue of my past I still act like a slave I still complain and grumble and make mistakes I I am I'm saved I'm pulled out of Egypt but I still struggle with certain issues but when I encounter the serpent when I encounter Jesus who became my sin I'm not forgiven of sin I'm clothed with righteousness it says in Corinthians in Corinthians 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 and if you have that verse and you can put that verse up 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1 it says the following I was memorizing it today actually but I want to read it 5 21 for he made him who knew no sin to be what it doesn't say he made him who knew no sin to carry our sin John the Baptist looked at Jesus and says here is the lamb who takes away the sin but Apostle Paul in here says he made him who knew no sin not to take my sin on himself to be sin why so that I can become righteousness of God in him not so that I will be forgiven that's been taken care of by the lamb it's so that I will become righteous because that's been taken care of by the serpent Jesus on the cross became a serpent he didn't just take my sin he became my sin why so that God doesn't just forgive my sin but God makes me as righteous as Jesus was sinful Jesus did not become sin by sinning I don't become righteous by right doing Jesus became sin by surrender and I become righteous by looking at Jesus on the cross The revelation of Jesus the serpent was not given in Egypt. It was given to the delivered folks. If you are here today and you don't have a relationship with the Lord, I want to introduce you the Lamb of God who came on this earth and He took your sin upon Himself and He paid a penalty in full for all of your sin. His blood is enough to wash everything you've done. I remember talking to a girl who committed abortion and couldn't forgive herself for what she's done. She grew up Catholic and said that I need to punish myself. Listen, Jesus' blood is enough. If it wouldn't be enough, God would tell you so and says you still need to add something to that. God doesn't expect you to pay more or add a tip to that payment. But once you receive forgiveness what a glorious gift that is the weight is lifted off the the pressure the grip of the devil over you is broken you're not done with God yet God doesn't turn your life over to you and says now you manage it yourself Jesus says I want to reveal another feature of me to you not only as a lamb who took your sin I want you to meet a serpent who became a sin because a serpent it wasn't a real serpent it was a made serpent he didn't take a serpent from the ground that was bidding people and fried it or put it in the oven and cooked it and hanged it this wasn't like that he made a serpent out of a bronze 
and on the cross God made Jesus in Corinthians we read 2nd Corinthians 5 21 it says he made him who knew no sin meaning there were there was no serpent he made out of a bronze a serpent he makes Jesus that has no sin in his thought in his attitude in his motive and Jesus becomes not just pays for my sin he becomes my sin and why is that necessary because God doesn't want me to just be delivered from Egypt and become an ex-slave, ex-sinner, ex-loser, ex-this and ex-that. God wants me to become righteous. Righteous is more than just I'm redeemed. It's more than just my sins are paid for. It's more than just God wiped the record clean and I am going to heaven when I die. That's forgiveness that's redemption that's eternal life but righteousness meaning you lived your life right it's not just you lived your life pure and innocent you lived your life right there is a reward for that and that my friend is what Jesus became in the wilderness for Israel that's what he became on the cross for you as a Christian otherwise you will live your life being bitten by the serpents of your mistakes, your shortcomings, your failures, your not measuring up, your breaking your own New Year's resolutions, your losing your streaks on the Bible app, your constantly tripping into this, falling into that, slipping into this. You're not good enough. After Egypt, the Lord does not want you to elevate your wounds, your faults, your shame and your guilt as a point of gazing upon. He didn't ask Israel to study and to investigate and to gaze upon where the snake bit. He says, lift your eyes from your faults. I know you've been delivered, but you're about to be transformed because you fix your eyes upon the snake. But I thought the lamb took over the Egypt, Egypt's, Egypt's problem. Yes, but Egypt is gone. You still have you. And the you gets you in trouble. The you gets you bitten. The you hurts. The you trips up. The you, yes the you, the people chosen by God in the wilderness complain. Maybe in your wilderness you give up. Maybe in your wilderness you fell into something or tripped into something and the guilt eats you like a poison, like a venom goes into your system and God says, I didn't just deliver you from Egypt. I wasn't just your lamb. I'm also your serpent. I want you to lift your eyes off of yourself, off of your sin, off of your shortcoming and I want you to lift it to Jesus, not the lamb but a bronze serpent who became righteous, who became sin so that you can become righteous. How do you become righteous? The same way Jesus became sin. Jesus didn't smoke, drink, or hanging out with the prostitutes, sleeping with them to become sin. He surrendered and the Father made him sin. And if the Father knew that inside of him, he was still pure and holy, he was a maid. It was like a fake snake. This was like fake sinner. Jesus was the only fake sinner there because he was not real deal. Like Jesus on the inside was so good and pure that even his betrayer said, I betrayed innocent blood. Even Romans said, I wash my hands. This is an innocent man. Jesus wasn't guilty. They didn't kill him because he did something bad. He was made serpent. Yet God turned his back on him even though he was a fake sinner. When you receive righteousness at first, you will feel a fake righteous person. Because faith feels fake until you stand on it and realize if Jesus being a fake sinner died like a real one, I being a fake righteous person can live as one. If your faith feels fake, keep walking in it, keep looking at the cross and say this is where fake landed him, therefore I can live 
feeling fake because then something happens with this faith. The wounds begin to close up. As they look to the serpent, they were beginning to be healed. They were beginning to be delivered. Then those things that maybe you kept falling into, they begin to be loosened off of your life. And God begins to bring you deliverance and transformation. Righteousness. You know, in Matthew chapter 5, it says, Blessed are those who are righteous. Righteousness, sense of righteousness carries a blessing. A blessing doesn't come from cars, houses and the particular neighborhood that you live in. Blessing doesn't come from the brand of clothes and the kind of friends you have. Blessing comes from carrying a sense, I'm righteous. And not because it's been now three months that you haven't done that thing that you were hoping to break, but it's because you have the gaze on Jesus who became sin. So you are righteous. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 it says that seek first the kingdom of God and then it says this and His righteousness. God says not only I want you to seek my kingdom but I want you to be in constant pursuit to live out my righteousness not your own. It's easy to do that the moment God delivered you because you ain't got any righteousness. But the moment you start to accumulate brownie points with the Lord, the moment you realize it's been already six months and you fasted every month, it's been every day that you've read the Bible, your tithe has been going up. The moment you realize I haven't missed the church, I am, I am doing good. And this is what begins to happen. We seek God's kingdom and our righteousness. God doesn't say seek my kingdom and your righteousness. Even when your righteousness improves, He says seek his righteousness. Your eyes always on the bronze servant and everything else shall be added to you. God is ready to add some things to your life. God is ready to add some things to your finances. God is ready to add some things to your family. He is ready to add some things to your walk of purity. He is ready to add some things to your relationship. Seek His kingdom and His righteousness. The Bible says in Isaiah that our righteousness in Isaiah 64 verse 4 it says human righteousness is filthy rags the word rags there is a word for a cloth a woman uses during her menstrual period Bible says in Proverbs 28 verse 1 it says that the righteous man is as bold as a lion when you have righteousness you have courage when you have righteousness you have strength when you have righteousness your head is up you have boldness to cast out devils you have boldness to pray for the sick. When you've done right, if you remember the, the weeks that you had, things that you did right, your prayer is even bolder. You're like, Lord, I know it's been only three days that I read the Bible, but I sure feel very confident today. <laughs> Imagine standing on the righteousness that Jesus has accomplished and finding boldness that God looks at you as though you have all the accomplishments, all the brownie points, of Jesus. You can pray with boldness. You can live with boldness. You can dream big dreams. You can pray dangerous prayers. You can step out of your comfort zone. Why? Because there's boldness. And people look at you and say, well is it because you fasted for so long? Oh yeah, I, I do fast. But I stand as a righteous man on the righteousness of Jesus. I seek His righteousness and He blesses me. Oh, it's, it's as though God looks at me and He recognizes Jesus. So He go ahead and blesses Jesus, not, not, not realizing that it's actually me. The same way that He looked at me on the cross and saw me and punished Jesus. Now He looks at me and He sees Jesus and He says, I'm going to add blessing to you because you're wearing Jesus' righteousness. You are bold because you're carrying Jesus' righteousness. In Proverbs it says that a wicked man falls by calamity but a righteous man falls seven times and gets up. That means that when I carry his righteousness I'm never protected from temptation but I am protected from living in a failure. I am pulled up even if I fall. I rise back up. Why? Because his righteousness pulls me back up. His righteousness in Ephesians chapter 6, it says it's a breastplate. If a human righteousness is just a bloody cloth, His righteousness is a weapon. 
His righteousness is bulletproof. And why does God make His righteousness a breastplate? Because it protects the heart. See, your heart will judge you. Because your heart operates based on knowing only what you did. But God's righteousness puts into account what He did. And sometimes the Bible says in 1st John that our heart will judge us but God is greater than our heart. It means when my heart judges me, I have a breastplate that says heart, sit at the feet of Jesus. Because there is more than what I did. He did something on the cross. He spilled His blood. He became sin that I will become righteous. Don't listen to your heart my friend. Listen to God's Word. Let God's righteousness cover your heart. Don't let, take clues from your heart because your heart is not the best indicator of true information. Your heart only knows you. It doesn't think about the cross. But the breastplate, it protects my heart. It tells my heart, God is bigger than you. I know you made a mistake. I know you don't measure up. I know you were doing good until you realize your neighbor is doing better. Now you realize you're not doing good. And the breastplate says, cleans close to me and says, it's not about you doing good. It's about God becoming a sin that you can become righteous. The Bible says that God delivers righteous from all affliction. When you are walking in who you are as a righteous person, God will deliver you from all your affliction. That doesn't mean you won't have affliction. The affliction won't have you. God has you. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against me I shall condemn. And the Bible says this is the heritage of the Lord and their righteousness is from God. What does that mean? That means I go to a courtroom of my consciousness and my consciousness executes judgment and say you messed up. You're horrible. You're not good enough. And the enemy when he releases his voice he attaches his vice because all of the demonic weapons are voice activated and I get up in that court and I am shaking and shivering because the facts are against me but I remind myself I am the heritage of God I am his child I am his offspring and my righteousness is from God so devil it is true that I got bitten by a snake it is true I don't measure up it is true but that is not the truth the truth is Jesus became sin that I become righteous. Somebody give God some praise. If you know that you are righteous, give God some praise. Lift your hands and say, Jesus, I thank you that I am righteous. I silence every voice of the accuser right now. I silence every voice of accusation right now. Every voice that says you are worthless. Every voice that says you'll never amount to anything because of what you've done. Devil, shut up! I'm the heritage of God and my righteousness comes from Him. I don't get my righteousness from my right living. I get my righteousness from a right standing. Jesus became sin that I will become righteous. Standing, the Bible says that righteous will not be shaken, will not be forsaken. But the verse that I like the most about the promise when I look to Jesus for my righteousness is Romans chapter 5 and verse 17 and it says the following. It says that for one, by one man's sin, death has entered into the world. If by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Paul is saying if through one man death came through everyone. Thanks Adam. He said through Jesus Christ if we receive the abundance of grace. See some of us received an to escape Egypt but we haven't received enough grace to live above the current circumstances that we have. We received the amazing grace that helped us to run away from the grip of Pharaoh. But today God wants to tell you He doesn't just have grace for you to escape hell. He has grace enough for you to reign in life. 
this is New Testament when they were being persecuted when they were being attacked and thrown to the lions Apostle Paul is writing the grace we have enables us to reign in life that means that you can reign above the situation that you are in right now the situation that is walking all over you right now that family drama that is happening that is weighting you down maybe that and um, that situation with your finances right now that is honestly it's ruling you the Bible says that through the gift of righteousness you can reign over that you can rule over that you can rise above over that you can walk above over that there is a power in your voice because of that there is a power in your act in your declaration because of the righteousness of Jesus embrace grace my friend it's time to move from rags to righteousness Jesus as a lamb he took your sin as a serpent he became your sin if you don't feel righteous you don't have to feel righteous you have to believe righteous Jesus didn't feel a sinner on the cross he was not a sinner but he was one no matter how he felt Jacob didn't feel like Isaac excuse me like Esau when he came to his father and wore the, his brother's clothing he didn't feel like him in fact he shook and was scared to death to come into his father's presence pretending to be someone else what worked to his advantage is his dad was blind. What works to your advantage is your Heavenly Father chooses to ignore the fact that you're not Jesus but you wear Jesus' righteousness and because you wear His righteousness all the clothing carries certain scent. The Bible says that Isaac he said I smell Isa. I don't see him but I smell him. My Bible says we are fragrance of Christ. When I put on the righteousness, I walk into the presence of God. I talk like Jacob. I smell like Esau. I can still talk like the old me and God says, I smell Jesus in this room. I'm going to go ahead and bless him. Why? I smell Jesus on him. I smell the righteousness of Jesus. I smell the perfection of Jesus on him. And I'm going to add things to him. I'm going to not let him be shaken. I'm going to make him bold as a lion. I'm going to let him rise up even if he falls. Why? Because I smell Jesus on him. He wears the righteousness of Jesus. Have you put the righteousness of Jesus in the wardrobe of your doctrinal convictions? You know a lot of us have garments we never wear. We keep them in the closet for some other day. This is the only garment you shouldn't keep in the closet. <laughs> How do you put it on? By confessing and trusting. How do you put it on? By saying, Jesus, I thank you. You became sin that I became righteous. And in that moment you become conscious of it and living as though that's true. On every hand raised let's begin to thank the Lord right now say Lord I thank you for your righteousness Lord I thank you for your righteousness I thank you that you became sin that I will become righteous I thank you for amazing grace I thank you for abundant grace I thank you that you were the lamb in Egypt and you were my bronze serpent in the wilderness I thank you that I don't just glance at the cross, I can gaze at the cross. Come on, every hand raised, every redeemed child of God whose sins have been washed, who didn't have to pay for what they did because somebody else picked up the tab. Hands lifted high, just begin to thank Him right now. Every child that has been bitten by a snake, every child of God that lives with guilt, this is your moment to shake that thing off. This is the moment to loose yourself from that and realize you don't have to perfect your faith on your own. You fix your gaze on Jesus. He already paid that price. He already became that.
high, covered by your grace. to shut the devil up. This is the time to silence your accuser right now by exalting the finished work of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. offering right now give the Lord a shout of praise right now if you're righteous and you know make some noise if you're righteous and you know make some noise Hallelujah. my brother Andre you know some of you heard his testimony you know a long time ago but um, from the things that you know he did there's a lot of stuff that was following him for a long time. He had this dream, you know, to go to a particular school and have a particular job and had a lot of setbacks because of the stuff that happened in the past. And I want you to just kind of hear what happened. Um, so I bathe people in radiation and it's a two-year program. And so I'm last stretch. And in the beginning, uh, second quarter, I broke my leg. It set me back a whole quarter. And I was on the verge of failure. I was on the verge of getting kicked out and have to restart next year. And how many times did you apply for that program? Three times. Th third time was success. And so it felt like I was going nowhere, and especially with the broken leg, not knowing where I was heading and on the verge, scared of getting kicked out. But somehow I just had that vision in my head to just keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. And then they also presented us with job opportunities, still being a student. And... I too saw myself in that position and it was like Joseph going from Potiphar's to prison it just kept on getting worse and worse and worse and somehow you know perseverance knowing who you are knowing what the enemy says about you and then what God and people see you do and succeed and so and so like a week and a half ago, manager sat me down. He's like, here's the plan. Here's the opportunity. We have a job. Do you want it? And I was like, you know, the door opened. I'm going to stick my foot in there so far in there that it's not going to close on me again. You know, when, when the God delivered my brother from the things that he was enchained to, and he missed a lot of time. Uh, and then he was trying to go to this program. I remember, remember Jordan, we were in the, in the home group praying for his tests and, uh, and he would fail. <laughs> and then things wouldn't work out. Something didn't work out. Then it was too late or something. It was a few years already and time was ticking. And then, um, you know, he finally got into that program. And then when he's in that program, he gets all of these accidents, all of these things that pretty much should throw him out of that program. You know, and the enemy can come and the enemy always has a voice. And with that voice he says things like you know you're not gonna make it look you've messed up too far just settle for just just give up just quit but I want to tell you something today God is not gonna bless you because you're good God's gonna bless you because you seek his righteousness because you have his righteousness and if he's gonna do it for Andre he's gonna do it for you whether it's in your health whether it's in your school whether it's in your family, whether it's with children, whether it's in your business, I believe there is a good God. He's on the throne and He says that I want to bless those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. 
if you know that you are righteous today is your time to decree and declare today is your time to begin to believe and ask for the things not that you deserve but Jesus deserves today is your time not to walk like a mouse but to roar like a lion today is your time not to wallow up in the mud like a pig but rise up from that thing that you fell back into rise up from that thing that you're lying in right now hallelujah right now we're going to take authority over every voice of the enemy that is using your past using your current situation to tell you that you're not going to make it and you're not going to you're not going to mount you're not going to break through this your life is over because of the righteousness of Jesus we're going to silence that voice right now in Jesus name come on somebody you're watching us on live stream because of the righteousness of Jesus you have a roar right now and it's not even the volume of your voice it's the substance of your spirit it's that when devil hears it he is terrified because the righteous is roaring the righteous is speaking the righteous is declaring the righteous is shouting the righteous is stomping his foot the righteous is raising his hands the righteous is singing songs the righteous is prophesying to the dry bones I want to say this with me say every voice that has risen against me voice of accusation voice of defeat voice of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus I shut you up I silence that voice I silence that voice voice of depression be silenced voice of defeat voice of crying be silenced in the name of Jesus Come on, open up your lips right now. Begin to silence every voice of the enemy in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name, we come against every voice of the enemy. We come against every voice of defeat, every voice of low self-esteem. We come against every voice of depression. Right now, we take authority over you. In Jesus' name, we break you down. We break you down. We break you down. We shut you up in Jesus' name. We reject your voice. Satan, we reject your, your voice in my life, in our lives, in Jesus' mighty name. Every voice of defeat and setback. We reject you right now in Jesus' name. We silence you right now in Jesus' name. Every raging voice in my head right now. I command you to be silenced in Jesus' name. Every voice of insecurity. Right now I command you to be silenced in Jesus' name. I am righteous in Jesus' name. Every voice of defeat and failure. Be silenced in Jesus' name. Come on church, lift your hands and begin to take begin to take charge of that voice that's speaking against you and begin to condemn it in Bible says that every voice that rises against you you will condemn begin to condemn that voice the voice of insecurity the voice of defeat the voice of poverty the voice of divorce the voice of failure and setback right now is your time to rise and condemn that voice and reject the speaking of the enemy into your life in Jesus name we silence every voice of the enemy every voice of the serpent we trample over you we crush you under our feet you will not have a place in our head in our mind every demonic thought right now we subject you we we, we subject you to the voice of Christ to the thoughts of Christ in Jesus mighty name we pray every every weapon formed against you will malfunction every weapon formed against your health has to malfunction in Jesus name every weapon that's formed against your finances God says will malfunction in Jesus name the enemy will think it already got launched but it will explode in the air it will backfire back on the devil it will backfire back on the enemy why because your inheritance of the Lord and your righteousness comes from the Lord because your righteousness comes from the Lord not because of your fasting not because of your praying though that is important and that is good but because the righteousness that you carry I want you to agree with me right now that every weapon formed against your health will not prosper every weapon formed against your family will not prosper every weapon formed against your finances and your business will not prosper every weapon that is formed 
warned against your purity and your walk with God will not prosper. Come on, if you're in agreement, lift your hand right now. Open up your lips right now. Begin to rebuke that weapon. Begin to declare the word of the Lord right now. The word of the Lord is, it will not prosper. You will prosper. Your family will prosper. Your business will prosper. Your children will prosper. Your wife will prosper. Your, your grandchildren will prosper. But the plan of the devil will not prosper. The plan of the devil will not prosper. You will live and not die. You will live and not die. You will declare the works of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Every hand raised right now. Come on, begin to praise Him right now. Begin to praise Him right now. Begin to declare it from your mouth. Cancer will not prosper. Diabetes will not prosper. Tuberculosis will not prosper. Arthritis will not prosper. Bankruptcy will not prosper. The guilt of the past will not prosper. Poverty will not prosper. Rejection and abuse will not prosper. I will prosper. God's plans will prosper. God's will will succeed. God's plan will be accomplished in my life. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Lord for your victory in Jesus thank you Lord that we can reign over sin in Jesus we can reign over Satan in Jesus we can reign over addictions in Jesus that we can reign over even our own weaknesses through Jesus thank you Lord God every eye every eye closed every head bowed I want to give an opportunity to those today who have yet to meet Jesus as the Lamb of God um, this idea of righteousness is very appealing uh, but you're you're there right now where you're still in Egypt you may be in a in a very sinful lifestyle and it's not what makes you bad it's the fact that you were born sinner the Bible says your master is sin your master maybe is selfishness your master is not Jesus and even if you profess to be Catholic or Christian or or whatever religion that you profess it's not what you profess it's what you possess it's how you live it's it's how you believe and so Israel they believed in God when they were in Egypt but they didn't follow him they didn't trust in him they were not saved by him right now Jesus is giving you that opportunity he is the lamb that took away your sin he wants to forgive you of your sin the the bad news is if you reject this free gift that cost him his life you will have to pay for your own sin on your own and my friend I'm gonna tell you one thing it will destroy you your sin will do no less to you than it did to Jesus Christ. Jesus already paid that price. He loves you so much. If you reject his gift, he will not stop loving you. But that sin, that master will continue to ruin and bring havoc into your life. No one looking at me, no one talking. If you're that person, maybe you've been coming for some time for Hungry Gen, or you've been invited for the first time today, and your heart screams, yes, yes that's what I need that's what I need that's what I need that's Jesus speaking to you right now I'm gonna ask you to identify yourself just just raise your hand and say hey this is me Vlad I would like to accept Jesus as my Savior and Lord I would like to repent of my sin I would like to place my trust in Jesus I'm gonna count to three and when I do so just raise your hand one two three thank you I see your hand thank you I see your hand and if you are in this in this room thank you I see your hand who say you know what Vlad this is me I would like to give my life to the Lord today I would like to come to Jesus and people already coming out if you raise your hand I'm gonna ask you to do something bold just wherever you're standing if you can come quickly right here we have a team we would love to pray with you come I see your hand thank you just come just come thank you 
Thank you. That young lady over there, come. I'm waiting for you. Thank you. Come. 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 There's no shame in receiving the gift of Jesus. Come on. It's the greatest gift. Thank you. Thank you, young man. And if there's anybody else or you wanted to raise a hand but you, you were a little bit afraid, you just overcome that fear, overcome that shame and just come. If you brought a friend with you and they want to, you just come with them. Don't, don't, don't let them come alone. You just come with them. I'm going to wait for a few more moments. Jesus is about to wash somebody clean. Jesus is about to become your master. Satan is no longer going to ruin, ruin and bring havoc into your life because Jesus is going to be the Lord and the Savior of your life today. If you're watching us on live stream and you're not right with the Lord, you can comment below and say, hey, I would like to get right with Jesus. We're going to pray a prayer in just a moment. You can be a part of that as well, whatever you are watching. Distance is not a barrier to those who believe. Amen, 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 amen. Welcome, guys. Let's pray this prayer together and then we're going to take you to the room to minister a little bit more. Church, let's pray this with them. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I come the way I am. I am a sinner. I'm in need of your salvation. I believe that you died on the cross. You paid for all my sin. I received that gift. I'm undeserving of that gift. But I need it. Wash me from my sin. Deliver me from my unrighteousness. Come and live in me. Be my Lord. And be my Savior. I turn away from the things that displease you. And I turn my life over to you. In Jesus' name. Hey, this is Pastor Vlad and thank you for watching this sermon. Please click on the subscribe so that you can be a part of our Hungry Generation YouTube community. And click on the bell as well so that you can be notified when we upload the new sermon. Thank you for watching and God bless you.